members, the Deputy Speaker. Are there any constituency statements from members? And I call the member for Lyons. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And it's good to see a fellow regional MP in the chair. Deputy Speaker, I am no fan of Julian Assange. My position on Assange and the charges he faces has, like most others in this House, been that he deserves the same protections any Australian deserves, no more and no less. But it has become increasingly clear that Assange has not been treated like any other Australian in trouble overseas. He is a man who has been targeted with extraordinary ruthlessness and single-mindedness by the United States military, intelligence and political apparatus. The speech delivered to the House yesterday by my colleague, the member for Bruce, brought the manifest injustice facing Assange into stark relief. I urge all in this place to read it. In a nutshell, Assange ran WikiLeaks, a website that, as its name suggests, revelled in publishing secret material. This included classified documents detailing activities by the United States military. WikiLeaks' publishing of this material was highly embarrassing to the US military and intelligence services. It's important to note WikiLeaks was not run from the US. Assange was not and is not a US citizen, and he did not and does not live there. Unsurprisingly, the US authorities brought legal proceedings against him, including extradition. And, of course, normally to be extradited, you'd have to commit a crime in the place that is seeking the extradition. That didn't happen in this case. If the United States succeeds in having Assange extradited from the UK, it will set a new and frightening precedent. It will mean that an Australian journalist writing for perhaps The Age or The Daily Telegraph or a commentator for The Nine or The ABC who says things that US lawmakers consider unlawful under US law could find themselves a subject of a warrant from the US seeking their extradition to the US to face charges. And if the US can successfully seek to extradite foreigners for breaking their laws, what is to stop other countries with which we have extradition treaties from doing the same? As much as this is an issue of individual injustice against Assange, it is an issue of our national sovereignty. An Australian citizen deserves the full protection of their government. Any supposed faith in the United States commitment to due process is misplaced. There is ample evidence, as the member for Bruce outlined, of US activities that run counter to due process. The pursuit of Julian Assange has been political, not judicial, and if he is extradited, his future will be in the hands of the Trump administration, not an independent and impartial judiciary. If he is extradited, he faces dying in prison for publishing secrets. I am no fan of Julian Assange, but as the member for Bruce said, it doesn't matter if you agree with him, it doesn't matter if you like him, it doesn't matter if you dislike him. He's an Australian with the same rights as you or me, and he's entitled to the protection of his government. Order. And I call the member for McKellar. Mr Deputy Speaker, I rise today to congratulate Heidi Middleton, business entrepreneur and breast cancer survivor. Much admired Order. and truly... The member for... Assist me at this point. Bruce. Bruce. To make an intervention, understanding Order 66A, to ask the member why he voted seven times yesterday to show Order. Um, and does the member accept an intervention? That the member a, for Bruce a, sorry, is interrupting a, a speech about a breast cancer survivor. Sorry, How low sorry, has Labor the fallen for, the that, they do that, that they will use breast cancer and a breast story of a breast cancer survivor sorry, to make a point? Order, order. They are disgraceful. Order. Absolutely. Order. The member for McKellar. Um, I understand from the clerk that an intervention isn't possible in the Federation Chamber during three minute constituency statements. The question is that the member be no longer heard. All of that opinion say aye. All of that against. The member for McKellar will come to order. All those against say no. I think the noes have it. Um, it is therefore an unresolved issue which we reported to the House at the appropriate moment. Um, I call the next speaker and I call the member for Shortland. Thank you, Mr Deputy oh, Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Today order, I'm providing order, the House the member with an Boofy update on the, the ongoing call. issues my constituents are having the in the for NDIS. Has the call. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I move the member no longer be heard. Order. You the question. Order. 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 
The member for Mackellar will come to order. The question is that the motion be agreed to. All of that opinion say aye. aye. Against? No. I declare that the ayes have it. <laughs> I wouldn't want to assist anyone from the chair, but uh, the, um, um, the matter is therefore unresolved and we reported to the House at the appropriate junction. Um, can I indicate that as the Deputy Speaker and the Speaker have both made clear that this type of conduct in the Federation is disorderly, if it continues I will suspend the Federation Chamber? Both. Um, I call the next speaker. And I call the member for more. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I um, understanding Order 187, um, I'm, I'm deeming that the behaviour in the Federation Chamber this morning is disorderly. I propose to suspend the Chamber for 10 minutes, and I would ask members to reflect on whether they intend to continue these. Um, practices which the Speaker has ma made quite clear are disorderly. Um, the Federation Chamber will resume at uh, 10.15. three-minute constituency statements, and I call the member for Isaacs. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. On Tuesday afternoon, shortly after the Prime Minister and Treasurer started crab-walking away from their claim to have already delivered a surplus next year, the back-in-black mugs being sold by the Liberal Party for $35 were suddenly listed as sold out. <laughs> Instead of selling their massively overpriced mugs, the Liberals were revealed to have taken the Australian people for mugs. Suddenly their months of arrogant boasts about having returned the budget to surplus, even while it was still in deficit, was shown to be a self-serving campaign of garbage. They're a bit like the dodgy builder who tells you, the job's all finished, how great am I, now pay me. And then you discover that the job isn't finished at all. And the builder says, well, when I said it was finished, what I meant was that I thought I was going to finish it. But it, it turned out to be harder than I thought. And, I, and how, how could I know it would rain? Anyway, look over there. For any other government, this would have been considered a catastrophic failure on the core promise that they were elected to deliver on. For the Morrison government, this was just Tuesday's scandal of the day and it wasn't even the biggest scandal of the week. Yesterday we learned that, contrary to the Prime Minister's claims that he had no involvement in the sports rorts scandal, key people in his office had sent 136 emails to the former Minister for Sport. People in my electorate of Isaacs can only look on in wonder at a Prime Minister who has nothing to say about falling wages, is doing nothing about falling living standards, seems to welcome climate change as a great opportunity for a scare campaign and thought nothing of sneaking out of the country during the bushfire crisis, but still had time to intervene 136 times on how best to rot the sports grant scheme to funnel taxpayers' money into the Liberals' re-election campaign. The people in my electorate of Isaacs in the southeast of Melbourne who volunteer and participate at sporting clubs in places like Mordialloc and Dandenong and Parkdale they never had a chance to get a grant under the Liberal Party's corrupt scheme. Why? Because my seat was not a target seat. Shame. My electorate office staff are now Shame. fielding upwards of 80 to 100 calls each week from people across my electorate and from around the country absolutely sickened yeah, yeah. by the corrupt behaviour of the Morrison government, failed leadership and deceitful abuse of taxpayers' money through this scandalous sports rort scheme a rorting scheme that was entirely conceived and executed for the Prime Minister's own political gain. One community organisation in my electorate, like many others around the country, was knocked back under Mr Morrison's scandalous sport rorts 
pyramid scheme. No reason was given. All they received was a sanitised and generic rejection letter. This government's a disgrace. Order. And I call the member for Leichhardt. Thank you very much indeed, Mr Deputy Speaker. To say that the Cairns tourism industry is currently doing it tough would be a gross understatement. Uh, and I'll just put it into perspective for you. Into the lead-up of Chinese, I call a member for Bruce. They hate Cairns. Mr. They hate no longer be heard. They hate Cairns. Order. Um, I made it clear before the Federation Chamber was suspended that the type of conduct that we're seeing this morning has been deemed by the Speaker to be an abuse of the forms of the House and disorderly conduct. Um, I alerted the Chamber to the consequences of this continuing. Um, I'm therefore deeming that the Federation Chamber. Um, is experiencing disorderly behaviour in accordance with Standing Order 187. I therefore adjourn the Federation Chamber until 10.30am on Monday the 2nd of March. Yeah.